Amen. All right, let me ask you a question this morning to start this message off. How many of you have ever heard this saying? And what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about this? When somebody talks about another person, well, she's with the Lord now. He's with the Lord. What's, what are you talking about? Somebody dead. Ain't that a shame? That we only think about someone being with the Lord when they die. How many of you ever seen somebody get saved here? How many of you ever seen somebody get baptized? How many of you had that experience in your life? You're with the Lord. You are with God. From the time you accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, you say, Lord, save me. You are with God. Amen. You don't have to wait to die to go be with God. But yet we have cliched that down to, well, they're, they're with the Lord now. No, I've been, I, I, I went to be with the Lord when I was 16 years old. Come on now. I've been with him ever since. Now, he, you know, I ain't always represented him real well, but he ain't never, like the Bible says, he has never left me, nor has he ever forsaken me. Amen. Even when I wasn't pleasurable to be around. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else got that? All right, now, I'm going to give you the definition of the word with. There's three main definitions. I'm going to give you the first two now, but I'm going to save the last one for another point here in just a moment. I want you to make sure you understand. So everybody say with. with. How many came with somebody today? Of course you did. Even if you're here by yourself, you still, if you're saved, you came with God. So say, with God. with God. By the way, the title of the message today is, With God. With God. I'm with God right now. Amen. Are you with God right now? Amen. Is God with you right now? Yeah. All right, we need to start living that way. But anyway, let me, give, let me give you the definition of the word with. The first definition means <laughs> together. You can't be with something and not be together with it. Amen. I mean, you know, in marriage, I am with my wife. We are together. Yeah. I'm not with nobody else in that capacity. Right. Amen? 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 So we are together. Amen? The second definition of the word with means to be in the company of. So, so if, you're, if you're going to a gathering during Christmas, you'll be with some family and friends. Why? Because you're in their company. Yeah. Now, if you stay home, you're not with them. Right. Amen? Right. Now, I know sometimes us folks... Christmas time, you might have in-laws or outlaws, and so you might fake that code where you don't have to go be in the company. You know, you all of a sudden got to go hunting where you don't have to be in the company of those outlaws or in-laws, okay? But tis the season, suck it up, buttercup, and just press on in there. Hallelujah. Unless you really <coughs> get sick. But anyway, <laughs> moving right along. Hallelujah. But you're in the company of. So when you get born again, you are together with God. And you stay in his company wherever you go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Now, how many know it's, it's not about knowing God, just as of some far mystic myth out there. Oh, when I got saved, I know God exists. No, it's not about he exists. You are with him. It's not about knowing him through a vain religion and going through, a, getting up doing a Sunday morning ritual thinking, oh, I've, I've honored God. No, I am with God. Touch your neighbor and say, you're with God. Believing that he just exists is not really being with him. Amen. You can believe something exists and not be with it. So it's not about this, this religion. It's not about this mystic thoughts or, or a, a kind of, a kind of believe. It's about knowing you're within the company and together with God Almighty himself. And when you can fathom that in your mind and realize that that applies to you, if you've been born again, then it'll shape the way you talk, it'll shape the way you walk, it'll shape the way you begin to think if you know God is with you every step you take. Amen. Now based on that, would God walk everywhere you're walking? Would God listen to what you listen to? Would God say out of his mouth some of the things that come out of your mouth? You're free to walk where you want to walk if, you're, if you think you're really not with God. You're free to hear and listen and watch and see anything you want to do as long as you really don't think God is with you. And you can say things out of your mouth that you want to say, flip it to anybody else who hears it, as long as you don't think God's with you. But how do you know if you knew God was standing beside you, you wouldn't say some of the things you say. You wouldn't go some of the places you go. You probably wouldn't watch some of the things you watch. And you wouldn't listen to some of the things you listen to if you really thought God was standing there with you. God is not standing with you. He lives inside you. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost, yeah. according to scriptures. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? And I'm going to be preaching probably one of the most important series I'll be preaching in a long time, starting the first of the year. 
I don't even have a title for it yet. Okay, because I can't wrap my head around a title for it. But I'm going to show to you spirit, body, and soul. I've been talking about this, teasing you with it for a while. We're going to break down. You are three parts. You are spirit, you are body, and you are soul. And only one part of you gets saved. Come on. Come on. We're going to talk about what that looks like when you walk it out. But this is kind of hinting on the edge. So if you can pay close attention, you might be ahead of the game. But you can go where you want to go. You can do what you want to do. You can say what you want to say. You can see what you want to see as long as you don't really think God's standing right there. As long as he's over there somewhere, you think you can get away with it. Come on. <clears throat> Come on. How many you know kids usually might cuss outside of their parents, but most of them won't cuss in front of their parents? <laughs> Come on. So, <laughs> and so you, 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 you used to be a kid, okay? Amen. I'm probably talking to you. <laughs> All right? Amen. Amen. Some of us as kids, man, you used to slip out and get you a little snort or a little smoke, but you wouldn't do it in front of your parents. Why? Because mom and dad come down on you if they hear that language coming out of your mouth. Mom and dad say, I didn't raise you like that. Just do this right here. So you wouldn't do it in their presence, but you get off thinking they can't see you. Turn your neighbor and say, it was on, baby. It was on. A lot of stuff gets on. When you, when you think you're not being seen by authority, then you're free to do what you want to. That's why the church thinks God's somewhere out there. We act like we want to. We can come in here on Sunday and just say, oh, God, I love you. You didn't see what I did this week, did you? You didn't see what I said to somebody this week. You didn't hear. Come on. He's with you. That means he's together. You're in, he's in your company. You're in his company. Oh, no. That could be a big yay or an oh, no. See, some people don't want a God that walks with them. They want a God they can just go to when they want. Yeah. Touch on everything, get you some of that. Now, you need to understand something. This thing of being with God was established right from the birth of Jesus Christ, which we're in the season now celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. And we all know that this is not the exact day, but hey, we're just going to go with it. It's good. It works for me. Hallelujah. Don't know for sure what day it was, but anyway. How many know it was established at God's birth? In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Now, watch this. It says, look, the virgin, talking about Mary, will conceive a child. She will give birth to, say it with me, a son, not a daughter, not anything else. She gave birth to a son. He knew who he was, okay? And they will call him what? Emmanuel. Now, a few verses up, the angel is, is letting Joseph know that this, this pregnancy is definitely by the Holy Spirit, that she hadn't been stepping out on him. How many know Joseph had to be a man of faith? Amen. Whoa, what a man. I mean, I ain't got time to preach on that, but what a man of faith, okay? And he says, she's going to have a son, and you shall name him Jesus verses later we're reading this one it says he will be called Emmanuel his calling was to be Emmanuel his name was Jesus his calling was Emmanuel which means what God is with us God with us God together God in the company of us is who Jesus was so anytime you got in the presence of Jesus you were in the presence of Almighty God because you were with him you were in his company and things would happen when you got in his presence. Just ask the lady that got the hem of his skirt that day. Amen? Don't have time to go into that. Amen? Are you with me this morning? So, so, so God is not something that we can't feel, see, taste, touch, and hear. He's not something out there that he is with us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Can I have an amen? amen. All right. I'll go all the way back to the book of Isaiah and watch what God says in Isaiah 41.10. He says, watch, I love this part. Don't be afraid, for I am I'm together and in company with you. I'm in your presence. I'm in your midst. I'm not somewhere over at the neighbor's house against you. I'm not in the next town. I'm not on, I'm not on Facebook Live. Hey, welcome, everybody. Hallelujah. He says, I am actually tangibly with you in company with you. Come on. That's what God says, for I am with you. So watch what happens. He says, don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I love that part. He says who he is, he says, I'm with you, and he said, I want you to know, I want you to know what's with you. Law is not with you. Judgment is not with you. I'm with you. God is with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's with you. And, and I love this part. He says, don't be discouraged, for I am your God. He was saying, man, something's with you, and you need to know what it is. It is God that is with you. It doesn't say religion's with you there, does it? It doesn't say a denomination's there with you, does it? Come on. It doesn't say if you memorize John 3, 16, that's there with you. It says God himself is with you. 
Don't get excited about that. Whatever you do this morning, there's a body of Christ. And then out of God, and you knowing God is with you, he promises three things in this scripture. He says, number one, I'm going to strengthen you. See, when you don't know God is with you, you'll let life get you angry. You'll let life get you frustrated. You'll snap at people. You'll snap at your family. You'll snap at your husband, your wife. Why? Because you don't think God can really walk you and give you the strength through this thing, whatever you're facing. But God says, when I'm with you, when I'm together, when you're in my company, you'll have my strength. It's only when we don't think God's with us and we don't recognize the company we're keeping that we will go in our own strength and try to make things happen. And no wonder we get flustered. No wonder we hear and see and talk and do some things that we really wouldn't do if we knew God was really with us. Wow. He says, I'll strengthen you. Second thing, he says, I'm going to help you. How many need some help from the Lord? How many know you can't get help from the Lord if you ain't with him? Amen? I can be somewhere, and if, if I get stuck in a ditch and I can't get out, I need somebody to come by. Let I me mean, know I ain't going to get out of that ditch until some person tangibly comes by and helps me. I want out of the ditch. Come on now. I want out of that ditch. I want out of that situation. I want things to be better. And I can push, and I can try, but sometimes there's just some things that I'm facing. I can't do it in my own strength. So therefore, when somebody comes by and out of the goodness of their heart says, I see you in a ditch, I'll help pull you out. Amen. When they pull up, we're together. Now we're working on something together, and I need that. Yeah. I don't want to face life on my own. I can't face life on my own. Let me just put it that way. For me, I can't do life by myself. i got to have somebody with me. I tell people all the time, I need adult supervision everywhere I go. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. I mean, I do. I need that. Because I, I tend to sometimes have too much fun sometimes and get carried away. How I many's ever? Amen? So I need that adult supervision. I don't like it all the time when somebody tells me, hey, you need to calm down, you need to back down. You know, I'm just. But I know it's good for me to have adult supervision. Now, I need adult supervision. Touch your neighbor and say, you need some of that too. <laughs> Amen? Now, what you don't want is two kids getting together trying to supervise each other. Amen? Because they'll be like, you do it, man. I dare you. Yeah. See, I'm not good in those situations. I, don't, I like theirs. I like... Anyway, we're moving right along. <laughs> I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to help you in your time of need and your trouble and the things you can't get out of the ditch yourself. And watch, I love this part, this third promise. He says, he says I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. It's not a hand that knows how to fail. See, if you see God from a distance and he can't reach your problem, you need to get a little closer to where he's with you. He ain't moved. You moved. Amen? <laughs> and when his hand is upon you, his hand does not know failure. His hand does not know second place. His hand does not know defeat. His hand does not know worry and doubt and fear. His hand, he declares, the only thing my hand knows is victory. And when I'm with you and I extend my right hand to you, you're going to get your victory in that. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Come on. <laughs> if we could just get a hold of this. That God is not somewhere out there. He is right here. He was here with me when I... As a matter of fact, he's the reason I woke up this morning. Amen. He's the reason I have breath in my lungs. He's the reason my heart's still beating. He's the reason my feet can go backwards or forward. He's the reason I got dressed this morning. He's the reason I can see and hear and speak this morning. Amen. If it wasn't for him, kaput, I'm done. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Are you with me? So that is God with us. Together... In the company of. Now I want to give you the third definition of the word with. The first definition was what? Second definition? To be in the company of. The third definition of the word with means in addition to. In addition to. So now I want you to think instead of God with us. Some people know Emmanuel, God with us. You've heard the song. That's the reason you knew it. Emmanuel, God with us, the song, beautiful song, great song, very scriptural song. But we thank God out there with us. We thank God over yonder, God in heaven with us, not God here with us. And most of us, if we can think God with us, we never come to this thing of, okay, God, today it's going to be me with you. Us with God. God was created to be with us, thus we were created to be with God with what we do, where we go, what we say. 
should always reflect the glory of God. When what we do, where we go, and what we say stops reflecting the glory of God, he's still with us, but we are not with him. Oh, wow. He's still with me, but I, I'm not so much with him. It's like the kid that takes the girl to the dance and she goes and dances with everybody else. They came together, but she ditched him for the football player. They came together, but she ain't really with him. Wow, are y'all with me this morning? Are y'all with, together with me in the company? Are you adding to this morning? So in other words, when I know God's presence, I am to add to whatever God is doing in my life that day. I am to add the value to God being on earth. I am to add to what God's word says on the earth with him. I am to add that. You are to add to that. Amen. There is no addition if there's not something there with it. Wow. So I want to read to you real quickly. With us, with God. Matthew chapter 19. Now I want to back up and read some context scripture to you starting in verse 23. And then we're going to stop right before we read verse 26. We're going to hold up on verse 25. Now, Jesus said to his disciples, these are the words of Jesus. He said, surely I say to you that it is, everybody say hard. hard. He doesn't say impossible. It says it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Everybody say a rich man. It's hard for a rich man to get there. It goes on and says this right here. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, who are we talking about here? Rich man. They say rich man. Now, watch this. When his disciples heard this, now we're going to stop here. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, well, then who can be saved? Because just as in their time, as in ours, there were rich people, middle class, and po' folk. Amen? Amen. Now, everybody say rich. How many know rich does refer to money? And the reason it's hard for the rich to get into heaven is because the temptation that a rich man has when he acquires riches outside of God, without God in his heart, without being with God, is that he starts trusting in the riches to, to make him who he is and no longer God. I have literally seen money ruin people's lives. I've seen people who were so dependent and so glorified God and everything was God this and God that and God this. And then all of a sudden they, they had secular success in the marketplace or, or in a position or something. And all of a sudden you didn't hear God so much. You didn't hear this so much. You might have heard God's name in vain come out of their mouth now when they didn't get their way. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Where it was God, I love you. Now it's God blankety blank. This ain't God. You just... So rich is money. It is. Money is not evil when it's with God. See, my money is with God. Are you listening to me? Whatever kind of money I get, it's with God. It's not mine. It's with God. How I many know riches can also mean your possessions? Because when you get rich, when you get a little more scratch in your pocket, you can buy some more stuff. And when you can drive up in a nicer Bentley or Mercedes or Maserati... And you step out and you feel like that car has made you the man or woman you are. Maybe you can pull up to a nicer columned up house and walk into that thing. Oh, we've reached it. And so when you get, and then when you get that, you got to maintain that and you stop maintaining a humble walk with God. Come on. Come on. And it makes it hard for those people to get to heaven. Yes. When you're so worried about possessions you have or getting more possessions, try, try to outdo the next person. Yes. Again, money's not evil. And again, possessions are not evil. You can have a Maserati and love the Lord and be with the Lord in that Maserati. Go out to the driveway and say, Lord, thank you for waking me up. Lord, let's get in my Maserati. Lord, let's go to work today. God will get in that Maserati with you and ride there and tell you how good it rides. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with possessions as long as your possessions don't possess you. Amen. 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 Nothing wrong with having money as long as money don't have you. Yeah. Now let's take this a step further. Some people are rich with looks. Or do they think they are anyway? <laughs> hey, they're some good looking people. Some people make, make a living with just their looks. You know, some people make a living with just their, the appearance of their hand or hand models. 
and they're insured like for you know millions of dollars because they're in the ads with all the you know he went to Jared. <laughs> you know he went to Jared. <laughs> he went to Walmart anyway. <laughs> Diamond's a diamond, it don't matter. Anyway, but some people think, oh, my, my looks or what everybody admires about me, and they'll, they'll, and, and I, hey, you know, I, I'm one of them that, that I think women need makeup, want makeup, have makeup, that's good. I say at the barn, need paint and paint the barn, honey. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> paint that barn, baby, it's okay. But don't paint the barn and leave God out. Thank you all that in a bag of chips because it makes it hard when you're all about you to get to heaven. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Anyway, I better get off of that one real quick. <laughs> some people, you have made yourself and faked yourself into some relationships and you base your status on your friends. And you spend day and night worried about how many likes you can get or how many friends or quotes you can quote and likes and followers and this right here. And you spend hours a day trying to make that happen and following this and click, oh, oh, oh social, oh, me, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, oh. And you, you forget about God. You're rich with friends, maybe, your fake friends. I love one of the memes that, that was on uh, one of the social networks here a while back and said, I forgot how many thousands of friends on Facebook and three people showed up to the funeral. Let me tell you something. I don't care if you got a thousand friends on Facebook, you ain't got a thousand friends. Come on. You don't have a thousand friends. <laughs> Come on, get, get real with yourself, amen? amen? But I'm with God. And whatever my friends have are going to be around, they're going to know I'm with God. Right. Yeah. So I take my, friend, I take my, my, my God to my friends. Right. Are you with me? So, so I'm not, I'm not going to post something on Sunday talking about praising God and I'm going to drop... drop F-bombs and words and crap like that all over the internet the next day. Because my God's with me on Sunday. He's the same God with me wakes me up on Monday. Amen. Are you with me? This the Bible says, can bitter and sweet water pour out of the same belly? No, it can't. Makes it hard for people to get in. Didn't say impossible, it just says it makes it hard. Some people are really rich with education and wisdom and smarts of the world. But they become so smart, they're so dumb, they don't recognize Jesus' need for him anymore. We become so smart and so intellectual in our thinking, we figure this out. We know how to manipulate this. You call me for the answer, but they can't realize the answer of their daily walk needs to be with God. Oh, but I'm so smart. Well, if you was that smart, you would re re realize and recognize it, you either got God with you all the time or you need God with you all the time. That's the smartest move anybody in here can make today. So don't get caught up in how smart you think you are if you're not walking. What, what wisdom I have is from God and with God. Right. Now, I've got some wisdom from God. Okay, I'm not all wise. But how I many? listen to me now. Listen to me real closely. The wisdom I have with God will not be effective if I don't have God with me in that wisdom. Because right. I could prove my point. I could know not to do something. How many of you have ever known something was bad? It was a sin. You knew not to do it. But because you wasn't walking with God, you went ahead and did it anyway. Come on, raise your hand. <laughs> Smile at me. <laughs> Lord, forgive us. <laughs> Why did we do that? Because we were not with God. If we were with God, surrendered to him, walking with him day by day, breath by breath, we would have never given in to that temptation if we would have stayed with God. Again, God was with us. We just don't want to be with God all the time. Wow. Y'all got time for one more? When you get to the point to where you walk where you want to walk, you see what you want to see, you hear what you want to hear, and you say anything you want to say, you are in walking in, listen to me now, self-righteousness of you. You're not walking in the righteousness of God because God is with you. Because again, if you're walking in the righteousness of God, you're going to say what God says, you're going to hear what God hears, you're going to see what God sees, and you're going to walk where God walks. Anything outside of that, you're into yourself. And that's the problem we have. That's one of the biggest problems we have with the church today is we're claiming one thing, but we're walking another thing. Amen. You remember the message I did several year, or a few years ago said, is that what Jesus says? Is that the way Jesus talks? Is that the way Jesus, is that the way Jesus thinks? Is that the way Jesus sees? Is that what Jesus listens to? And it got real quiet just like it does right now. 
And here's what I just try to tell people. If God don't go there, if, if you wouldn't get up in the morning and God be with you, and you say, hey, God, let's go down here and do this, then you don't need to be doing it either. Hey, God, let's watch this. If God wouldn't watch it with you in the room, you don't need to watch it. Hey, God, let's talk about so-and-so. Let's let these words come out of our mouth. If we wouldn't say them with the turn to God and say this. If, if you couldn't turn to God and say the thing to God that you'll say to other people, you don't need to say it to other people. Because God hears everything you say. God sees everything you see. God hears everything you hear. And God sees everywhere you go because he's with you. Wow. But we act like he's not there. Or we become so vaunted in our own self-pride that we just don't care if God's there. We're going to do our thing. And then we have the excuses and blame everybody else. Well, this, is, this happened and this is why I went off. Well, this happened, that's why I had to go there. No, you don't have to go anywhere. Stop blaming and doing that. God is with you. He will guide and direct your steps. You don't walk by sight. You walk by faith, child of God. And faith ain't going to walk you into sin. Faith ain't going to walk you into compromise. Faith ain't going to walk you into anger. Faith ain't going to walk you into... Bo Unless your faith's in yourself. Now let me finish this scripture up. So we've talked about the rich person, the man. It's hard to get into heaven when you're rich in everything else but God walking with you. Now watch what God says in verse 26. But Jesus looked at them because they were wondering and said to them, with men it is impossible. With, together, in the company of other people, just regular people in the company of people that don't know God, it's impossible for you to get to heaven. The Bible says it's impossible for you to be in the company of, for you to add your stuff, your life to those people. With man, it's impossible. But, <laughs> say the next word with me, but Amen. with, together, in the company of, you adding to God, all things are possible. How many things? All. With who? God. With. With. Together, in the company of, and you adding to what God is doing, all things are possible. Now, let me take you, take you to the church mentality. When we read, see, we don't read that the way it's written. We just read all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. That means I'm going to go down here, live a screwed up life as I can, do my own thing, have my own personality, have my own set of morals that I like, that meets me, that justifies the men's and the ends, no matter how, what's done to me, do whatever life you're in, my addictions, whatever, I can justify them. And, and God, if you want to do something that's possible, you need to come do this magic trick over my head. You want him to do something alone without you. The word with means you've got to be together with him for it to happen to you. He's not into doing solo ministry. God is not into doing solo ministry. He developed you, created you in his image to work with you. To you and then through you. That's why he wants to be together in the company of and you to add to what he's doing. Amen. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> with men, it's impossible. With God. Everybody say, all things are possible. To those who are with God. Who's with God? See, we don't even want to raise our hand. Who's with God today? Who's with God boldly today? Not ashamed of it. I'm with God. I'm with God. I'm, I'm adding to the life of Christ in this earth by being obedient. I'm an addition to what God's doing. I'm in His company everywhere I go. Everything I say. Everywhere... I'm, raise your hand again if you're with God. Yeah. I'm with God. And I'm not ashamed of it. Wow. So now watch this. With God. You with God. Everybody say me with God. Yeah, that's a good one. All, leave that up there. All things are possible. Now I want you to watch this. How many know prayer to God? How's, how's God ever going to get prayer? How does God receive prayer? I mean, you know, it for prayer to be active for God, and he's God, God wants prayer, it requires you and me to be with him. Right. <clears throat> Nothing else prays. 
Trees don't praise. I don't care what you think. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> the only animal I know that prays is a dog. They say heal. It goes, ow. Just kidding. <laughs> Just a little joke. I know it's very little. but Let's look at some of the other tenets of what God wants in the earth. How many know God wants bold faith? Yeah. Who's going, who or what's going to give God bold faith in the earth? You and I. So for there to be any faith, it's going to require you. Together with God, you can have faith. You by yourself, there's no faith. So 30 never say it requires you. Together with God to have faith. You add the two. God wants faith. He created you to have faith. You add to God what in his creation. Now faith is available in the earth. But only if we do our part with him, with him, with him. Oh, here's a good one. How many believe in miracles? How do miracles happen? Come on. The miracles just appear out of nowhere? Miracles only appear around people. Miracles only happen to and around and through people. So miracles require you and I with God. Now, I have learned I want to be the miracle, not need one. Hallelujah. Because if you need a miracle, that means you're in trouble. Yeah. I am ready to be the miracle for someone else. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. See, that was, that was solely required and separated to only people in his image that walk with God. You cannot raise a person from the dead without God. You cannot have a miracle in the earth without God. God does miracles to and through his people that he's with. With. Wow. Love. For there to be any love, it requires you. It requires you to be with God, and you can't love outside of God because God is love. So you've got to be with God if you're really going to love somebody. If you're married, you've got to be with God to put up with him. Come on, ladies, can I have a better response than that? Amen. Guys, for you to be able to put up with her the rest of your life, you're going to have to be with God. Amen. Smart men didn't say a word right there. <laughs> Notice I didn't say nothing else. I didn't let that lie right where it's at. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. <laughs> but love requires you and I to be with God. And you may say, well, I know somebody don't love God, but I think they love their kids and their wife. They may have a love, but they don't know the love of all to have for them. Because you can't love until you know love. And love is God. God is love. God, when you get God with you, now you got God's love. Amen. We all agree with that. Now watch this. If you out here fussing, and Come if you out here gossiping and griping and grumping, is that God's love with you? No. So be careful. Wow. That one hit me too, bless God. Amen. How many know God is a blesser? God loves to bless who? So for blessings to happen on the earth, it's going to require who? <laughs> Where else are blessings going to fall? Amen. He created us with him. When we're with him, we get in his and with his blessings. Yeah. He's always wanting to bless you. Yeah. He's always wanting to take you to the next level. Right. He's always wanting to do that. But when he's with you and you're not with him at the date, <laughs> it's hard for you to dance. Come on. But when you get with him. Blessings are coming. They're there. Why well, ain't I blessed? God, you're out there not doing nothing. And as long as he's out there, he can't do nothing. But he ain't out there. He's with you. Amen. You just got to acknowledge he's with you and you want to be with him in addition to him. Y'all hmm. got time for one? Two more, you're going to get them anyway. <laughs> I got to go quick. Prophecy. Amen. Prophecy requires... God doesn't give a prophetic word to a tree or a dog or an animal. He gives prophetic words to his prophets and prophetesses. Come on. And if you, well, I don't believe in prophecy, well, then you don't believe the Bible. Come on. Because the Bible says, he says, I will do nothing in the earth until I first let a prophet know. Come on. That's right. Well, why don't we know these things? Because the prophets can prophesy, but if nobody's listening and paying attention, Come you don't get it. Come on. Because you don't know God in that way. You don't know the, the God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost is also the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. 
the fivefold ministry. Come on. So for anything to be prophetically happening in the earth, it requires you and I. And the Bible says you may all prophesy. Anyway, I ain't got time to go into that. <laughs> and the last one I'm going to talk about today. How many know in the Bible it says there are gifts of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Who gets those? Who gets the gifts? Do the trees get the gifts? Do the animals get the gifts? Do the concrete buildings get the gifts? Does the ocean get the gifts? Does the desert get the gifts? Well, then what else is left pretty much in the whole world that can get the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Us. But guess what we have to be with to get the Holy Spirit? Yeah. We have to be with God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you've got to be with him to operate in his gifts. They're his gifts. Are you with me? So you can, see, Amen. you can babble in your own words or you can speak the heavenly language. You babble when you're not with God 100%. You can speak a heavenly language with God. The only way you will ever speak in tongues is with God. Come on. Are you with me? Come on. It's the only way. So God with us is so much, so God with us, the church, the body of Christ, those who say we're born again. Now, just these things hang on us. Prayer, faith, miracles, love, blessings, prophecy, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are all can only happen when we're with God. Does that paint a picture of you now why the church is not walking in power? Why is the church not walking in massive prayer, massive faith, massive miracles, massive love, massive blessings overtaking us, prophecy, words of wisdom, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing? It's because God is with us, but we choose not to be with God except maybe for a short time on Sunday. When we decide to be the church with God, and all things are possible with God, that's when you'll see the church explode into the revival that's prophesied. Exactly. Yes. Come on, somebody. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so now, say, say, say this to me. Say, God with me. Amen. Let's put that last scripture up, that last sentence, verse 26. I want to show this to you again. It's coming. So say, 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 turn to your and say, God with me. God with Look what it says. When God, when God is with you, what's possible? Always. How many of you believe the scriptures? How many of you believe the word of God? Yeah. That's the same thing. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we say we believe this. How many of you believe God is with you? Yeah. So if we believe the word and we believe God is with us, and if God is with us, the promise of the scripture is all things are possible. So is it possible to overcome depression? Is it possible to overcome fear and anxiety? Is it possible to overcome the worst things that ever happened in your life? Is it possible for you to overcome sin? Is it possible to overcome failure? Is it possible to overcome your hurts, your habits, and your hang-ups? Is it possible to overcome your addictions? How? With God. You're never going to do it outside of Him. Only with God. Yeah, we praise you. Come on, let's give Him a five-second praise break. Stand on your feet if you're with God in this house and give Him some praise. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Come on, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Woo. All right. Be seated right away. We got to go. I meant to bring some balloons in here with me today. Because <laughs> this bunch went crazy popping balloons from the ceiling last night. Some of the kids let some of the balloons go, and Austin got a big long pole, and we zip tied a knife to the end of it. <laughs> of course, everybody's around it. If it failed, it was going to be a cool stabbing. We would have been able to perform with God miracle for healing. But it was like, pop. And everybody goes, yeah! Woo! I'm like, man, I stand up there and tell y'all God loves you. You're like, <laughs> pop a stinking balloon in the house of God. It's like Pentecost broke out all over. I was expecting somebody speaking tongues, run and fall out. <laughs> but you just got excited over the word being revealed to you about who you are and who, we're, who you're with and who's with you. Yeah. Don't lose that. Don't lose this simple lesson today. You are with God. God, if you are with God, all things are possible. 
You can't overcome that sin. You can overcome that addiction. With God, you're able to walk where God tells you to walk. With God, you're able to look at what God tells you to look and not look out. With God, you're able to hear what God wants you to hear and what God don't want you to hear. You'll shut off. With God, you'll only speak what God tells you to speak. You won't speak some of the vile garbage and crap and gossip and that so easily flows out of our mouths today. But it only happens with who? God. With God. Hmm. So God chose to change the whole world, implement his kingdom, not through any of his other creations except the crown and glory of his creation, which is you and me. He don't want to be with a tree. He don't want to be with, with the earth. He wants to be with you and me. Above everything. That's why he gave Adam authority to name everything. He didn't name nothing in the earth. Adam did. The only thing he named was Adam. Wow. Because he wanted to be with Adam. And he wants to be with you today. That's why Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. Come on, God. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, now watch this, how, how much authority? All, not some of the authority. That's why the Bible says in the, in the scripture we just read, all things are possible. Why can all things be possible, even the impossible be possible to a person who's with God? Because all authority has been given to Jesus in heaven and on earth. Well, when I get to heaven, it'll be perfect. It can be perfect here. With God. Didn't say all things will be perfect, but you can walk in a perfect mindset. You can walk in a perfect attitude. You can walk in... But when you don't think that, when it's over there, and you're just going to get it over there, no, you need to learn how to bring it here. Yes. On earth as it is in heaven. Yes, I ain't got time to break that down either. <laughs> Go, therefore, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. Now watch this. Teaching them to observe... Everybody say all things. All Next things. verse. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, say it with me, three words. God's talking here, he says, I am with you. Always. I'm with you when? Always. Even when I disappoint. Always. Even when I fail. Always. Are those things going to happen? Yes. yes. But when they happen, I've got all authority because he's with me to now overcome that and not do that again, to change my mind, to change my mouth, to change my attitude, to change my doings and rounds. Why? Because of who I'm with. Amen. See, your personality, your character is going to be reflected of who you hang with the most. If you hang with the world more than you hang with the holiness of God, your actions will always reflect the world. If you start hanging with the holiness and the righteous, victorious hand of God, then your life's going to start reflecting that. Again, show me your friend. I'll show you your future. I love that scripture. Let me read it to you one more time. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you. I am together with you. You are in my company. And when you're with me, it's adding to everything I want to plan out in your life. In addition to. So it's time that you, most people know God wants to be with you. But I'm asking you today, do you want to be with God? With Him, together, in His company, adding to what He's doing in your life. Yes. Now listen to me now. For Him to add to my life means I've got to subtract some things out of my life that doesn't glorify Him. Sometimes it's some personality things. Sometimes it's some reflection things. Sometimes it's some attitude things. But how do you know, to get addition, sometimes you've got to take away some things. But I want God to take away what don't want, He don't want with Him. And I want to be 100% of everything. Mind, eyes, mouth, ears, feet, hand. Everything, everywhere we go, we're with God. How many of you already knew that on a certain level? How many understand it's real deep, though, now today? And I ain't went deep with you today. I've just kind of maybe from the top notch to the next shelf. This thing is layers deep being with God. It goes back to principles of God works for everybody and has a measure of success with the principles of God. I mean, God wants his church unified. When the church gets in unity, the church is going to grow. 
a biblical principle. When we're in unity, we're going to grow. How many know that also works for the outside world? Any group that decides they want sin to be very apparent and they can get organized and in unity, that sin will, will eventually be thought of as not sin. Look at same-sex marriage. What happened? They got together in unity. And they shoved something right down to an unconscious. Anyway, I ain't got time to go into that. But I'm telling you, the principles work to a certain measure, some success for any and everybody. But it's only the presence of God there's no failure. Listen. In the present with God, there's never been failure. There's not a single recorded failure in the presence of God. And the church was designed to receive the blood of Jesus where we can be with God, not over there, but here. Over there is taken care of already. It's here that I need to deal with. So whatever it is you struggle with, whatever vice maybe is on you, well, I'm a, I'm, I really am a good-hearted person. I do love God, but I've got these few little hang-ups. But if you'll just get with God, He'll take care of that for you. Amen. No, man, you don't understand. This has been in my family for years. The, the, the blanks are like, the Smiths are like this, the Coots are like this, the, 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 the Whitney's, we're just like this. Who says you've got to stay like that? If it's not with God, it can be overcome with God. Amen? So there's no excuse for us not to be with God today. And add to. How many of you know today you're an addition to the things of God for His glory? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Man, if you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you're the one we're praying for the most. Amen? We want you to know we love you. If you're watching this morning by... By, by, by live Facebook, man, you're, on, you're in your room, wherever you're at. We love you guys, too. Can we, can we give them a hand clap and thank God for that technology to get the Word of God out? Amen. So I just ask you to bow your head right here. If you're here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, and you say, man, I want to be with God, and I want God with me, and I want to be with Him. I've never done that. And I want to acknowledge today I'm ready to get born again. I'm ready to have this new creation in my life my heart and start a brand new journey today with God. If you've never accepted Christ and you want to accept him today, just lift your hand up real quickly. Anybody? Anybody? All right. If you're here this morning and you say, man, I, yeah, I love God. I love God. I, I, I've, give, I've surrendered my life to him. I'm doing the best I can. But man, I realize that I can't get it. He's heard everything I've said. He's seen every attitude, good or bad. He's seen disrespect, dishonor maybe he's seen lies manipulation he's seen me walking not knowing and, and ignorance do some things some things, this is my first question I've just done out of some pure stupidity I'm just, that's me I've done some stuff knowing it was better just stupid and just did, just did the opposite I've been there, I've done that but today I want to make a commitment to God and I'm going to start right here today living the rest of my life acknowledging God is with me. And that he's not just wanting to walk with me to walk where I walk. He's wanting to lead my feet, my hands, my eyes, my ears, and also my mouth. I want to walk with him today in a new, whole new life. If that's you this morning, lift your hand up. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighteen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Mine's 19. That's me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with you, okay? I need this in my life, too. Thank you, Father. Come on. Yeah, let's celebrate today. Come on, let's celebrate these wins and these hands up all day. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, as always, it's awesome to be in the house of God. He's with us. Now, listen, I know he's with you right now. Don't leave him here. When you get to lunch and they say, who's that? Just say, I'm with him. You going somewhere today, say, hey, oh, by the way, I'm bringing a guest with me. He goes everywhere I go. Who's coming? His name's Jesus. Uh -huh. he, he goes everywhere I go. Kids, when you go to school tomorrow, say, hey, can we go to the bathroom? They say, what do you mean we? I got Jesus with me. Don't go to school without Jesus. I don't, when you go to Walmart, you need to take him with you. Uh -huh. You better take him with you. 
When you go to work and you clock in, you're clocking in for two that day because he's with you. When you get on that phone and you open that internet, God, God, he is with you. Act like it. He's with you. Don't leave him here today. He's not going to stay anyway. If you're a child of God, he's going to go wherever you go. He's going to stay here. He's going to go with you. You just need to acknowledge and act like it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Without, without us, there is no prayer to you, God. You need us to pray today, God. You designed us to pray. We're with you. Because you are with us, Lord, we don't want to pray what we pray. We want to pray with you, not just to you, God. And I'm not trying to draw it out, but I want to challenge some of you in your prayer time tonight or whenever, tomorrow morning, whenever you're going to pray the next time, I, I'm going to challenge you not to pray so much to God, but ask God, say, Lord, would you let me pray with you? Would, let me, let, would you show me some things that I can add my voice in agreement with what you're wanting to happen in the earth, in the world, maybe in your family, maybe in something else? Just add, spend a little time in quiet seeking that and then begin to pray and you'll be amazed. You'll start praying with God, not just to him. It'll make a big difference. I just challenge you to do that. Just a little extra moments. But Father, we thank you right now for those hands that are lifted, God. Just said today, I want to start a fresh journey today, God. I want to start walking like I know you're with me, God. I mean, I knew you were God, and I knew you were out there. But Lord, today, hopefully, these, these words of Scripture, not, not maybe my preaching, but the Scriptures themselves declared, you are actually tangibly with me, God. And I'm going to be coming these next few weeks, I'm going to learn how you're in my spirit and how you affect my soul and my body by being in me alive with me, God. And so, Lord, I thank you that I'm starting a journey of knowledge and wisdom that's going to lead to some altercations in my lifestyle, what I see, what I hear, the way I step, what, I, what comes out of my mouth, my attitude, but my gratitude is going to be there now instead of my attitude. So, Lord, I just pray over this body today, God, that you bless them, God, because they're with you to get that blessing, God. You want to bless. You want signs and wonders and miracles coming to them and through them, God. When it comes to with you, I thank you, Father, you're with us. You are Jesus is your name, and I call you today. My Emmanuel. Say that with me. Say, His name is Jesus, and I call Him my. Say it. You are my Emmanuel. You are with me, God, and I am with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you and praise you today in Jesus' name. Amen. We're fixed up.